Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be talking about spellcasting. As we continue our series on high-level magic, we're going to be talking about the cleric. Clerics are one of those unique classes that get to choose their spells every time they long rest. So, you can still go back to some of the lower level spells, and you don't really need to take high level spells every single day, but sometimes you really need that extra bit of super powerful magic in your back pocket. Today we're talking about 7th level spells, and my recommendations, a top 5, for what clerics should be packing and some of their most powerful 7th level spells. Starting right away with number 5 on my list, we have the spell Plane Shift. This is a teleport-esque spell, but instead of taking you somewhere else on the same plane of existence, with a whole bunch of uh, conditions in that, it simply takes you anywhere you want on a different plane of existence. One of the tricks about this spell is it does require a tuning fork that is attuned to the plane of existence that you want to go to. The DM could make that as easy or as hard as they like to acquire. At level 13, I could definitely see it being uh, something that's not too hard to attain. That's when clerics can get this spell. And then you and several creatures can just gather around and you cast the spell and it takes you to that plane of existence. You can specify a specific location and you'll arrive at or near that location. If you know the location of a teleportation circle on that other plane of existence, and you know its sigil, uh, you can actually teleport straight to it, just like the teleportation circle spell. Um, so that does reduce some of the risk. But the other cool thing about plane shift is that it doesn't have to be used to teleport. You can actually use it to banish. You choose a creature, um, you know, and they make a saving throw, charisma save, and if they fail it, then they are banished to the plane of existence that you discussed. So if you have a tuning fork that goes to the Nine Hells, all you gotta do is cast Plane Shift against a monster, and they get sent to the Nine Hells against a saving throw. One saving throw, and they're just gone. And unless they are equipped with powerful magic themselves, or are a demon or a devil or something, it's very unlikely they're gonna come back. So that's basically a one-hit kill. Um, of course that requires you have the tuning fork for that specific thing, but sending anyone to an astral plane reality, very strong. This is a great spell for, for, uh, exploration and storytelling purposes. Now, at number four on my list, we have the spell Resurrection. This is the bigger brother of, um, the Reincarnate spell or the Raised Dead spell. Um, it takes a thousand gold pieces to cast every time, and takes a full hour for you to perform it. But once done, this seventh level spell can bring someone back from the dead if they've been dead for a century or, or less. A hundred years! And you don't even need to have their whole body. All you need to have is a piece of them. A finger, a tooth, a piece of their hair, uh, anything. Like, you could literally have, like, a severed head if you, if you could get a hold of it. A skull would work. You cast the spell, and an entire new body is formed for them. Um, it does have the resurrection sickness of the minus four penalty to their skills, which goes away over the next few long rests. Um, but still, it, the idea that you could bring someone back from the dead that far, like, you could legitimately, assuming that you had, like, imagine this. You have a party, goes on an epic quest, one of them ends up getting killed. Then, several, you know, generations later, uh, you have, like, a grandson of that adventurer. And um, they go on a quest and get the ability to cast Resurrection. They could bring their grandparent back to life if they wanted to. Like, that kind of multi-era sort of gameplay is absolutely something Resurrection could pull off. And of course, if you happen to go past the 10-day requirement that Raised Dead do, this also works just fine to bring someone back from the dead after a long adventure when you didn't have the ability to bring them back. 
So yeah, Resurrection, great for storytelling, and just great for long-term party um, insurance, effectively. It's a, it's a really good spell. Now at number three, we have a Conjure spell. Player's Handbook-style Conjure spell, Conjure Celestial. This one allows you to conjure a celestial, so an angelic being, uh, but they have to be CR 4 or lower. Now, there's nothing wrong with CR 4 or lower. That's a pretty decently powerful creature. Um, the only reason that I would say this one over Summon Celestial is because you can choose from the list of Celestials in the Monster Manual, as opposed to the 5th level spell Summon Celestial, which gives you a stat block in and of itself. The Conjure spells just lean into the Monster Manual. So if you know the Monster Manual well, this spell works. Personally, if it were me, I'd probably upcast Summon Celestial. The Tasha's summoning spells tend to be better balanced. But when we're going with 7th level spells, you can't argue with you know bringing an angelic being to your side. You know, summon a unicorn if you want to. Like, they're, they're good, good allies to have, and you can have them, and, and it's just a really um, iconic thing for a powerful cleric to summon an angel to help them. Now, at number two, we have a one of the best utility spells in the whole game, of any level, and that is Etherealness. Etherealness you cast on yourself, and you step into the border Ethereal. This is the space between the Ethereal plane and the Material plane. So technically, you haven't entered the ethereal plane in the literal sense. You haven't gone to the Feywild, the Shadowfell, you haven't gone to, like, the elemental planes. You're still standing next to the material plane, but on the border of it. Creatures cannot see you. Um, you can see the material world like a ghostly sort of shadow of itself. You can walk through walls, fly up, go down into the earth, whatever you like because the material objects don't really impede you. You can't interact with anything, so you can't go ethereal and then just start killing people because you can't actually touch stuff um, or talk to things. Uh, I had a player one time ask if they could use a sending spell to talk to someone else telepathically while they were in the border ethereal. I ruled it was fine because sending lets you go across planes of existence and you're basically right next to the material plane anyway. Um, but it would take something like that in order to get a message, because you're, you can't just straight up talk. Um, the spell is also really cool because of its time. It lasts for eight solid hours. And if you upcast it to the 8th or ninth level, you can actually bring more people into the border ethereal. Three extra per spell level. So a party of four with a level 8 etherealness could explore an entire dungeon, a castle, a forest. Like, they would have eight hours to basically scout out anywhere they want. The only creature that could see you would have true, would be one that had true sight. So, all good stuff here. Best utility out there, just being able... This, this is kind of like super invisibility. Like, imagine greater invisibility, except it lasts for eight hours, and you actually can't be targeted. It's, it's a phenomenal spell. But number one, number one is a really hard one to turn down because of its thematic nature and its power. Divine Word. This spell specifically in the Player's Handbook says that this is a word from the dawn of creation, imbued with, you know, the power of the gods. You speak the word, it's only a bonus action to cast as well, which is kind of crazy. Um, and instantaneously, any creature that can hear it has to make a charisma saving throw. If they fail it, a certain effect happens to them based on their health. This is uh, one of those spells that is a save or suck, except the save has more to do with how much health you have than the actual saving throw you make. If you have 50 to 40 hit points, uh, or I guess 50 to 41, um, you'll be deafened by the divine word for a minute. Um, if you are 40 to 31 hit points, you will be deafened and blinded for 10 minutes. 
And if you have 30 to 21 hit points, you will be deaf and blinded and stunned for an hour. So the lower your hit points, the more the spell affects you. And if you have 20 or less, like many minions in the game do, this spell just means instant death. No saving throw. Well, I mean, you have to fail the saving throw against the spell. But there is no repeats. There is no hit point loss. There's no death saves. You just instantly die. And regardless of all of that, um, if you use Divine Word against Fiends or Celestial or Fae or something else that's not from the Material Plane, um, it has a banishment-like effect where it just sends them back to their home plane, um, except there's no repeats and they don't come back. You don't have to hold concentration, nothing like that. They're just gone, and they can't be brought back for another 24 hours minimum, short of using a Wish spell. Um, so it's, it's a super banishment. It is a... A bunch of status effects for kind of mid-level monsters, and minions are just straight up dead by this spell. Uh, it, it is a great, powerful magic, which, you know, scales appropriately based on how long you use it. This is one of those spells that absolutely could kill a boss, in the sense that it's midway through the battle, you've weakened them down, but your party's also really struggling, and you need one solid hit to just end the fight, Divine Word could be your ticket. And even if it isn't, the status effects it incurs will um, deter any enemies, and the banishment effect is also fantastic. Regardless of hit points, it will send a creature back, so this is perfect against any otherworldly being. Divine Word is powerful, thematic, nothing like a cleric speaking a word of the gods themselves. And that's why I give this the number one. Uh, etherealness might be better from a utility perspective, but I say Divine Word is perfect for combat and for just having that thematic exclamation point at the end of a campaign. Nothing, nothing better than that. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below, and keep your eyes peeled for more uh, spellcasting reviews coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.